So what is your typical bookings like? Do people, do you generally see somebody for an evening? Do you see them? Do you go away for like a weekend? Like what is your normal kind of interaction like? All of that. So, so now at this age, I, you know, you spend years with the same one or two people. I was going to ask you, you probably have a lot of repeat clients, right? I've spent the last three years with almost one person. Wow. Okay. That's how it goes later. But the first time, so talk about screening that actually continues into the appointment. So Mm. I always met in public. Mm -hmm. If that was a deal breaker for a guy privacy wise, then you can't meet me. Right. There's a million others you can meet, but not, not me. Right. Uh, it doesn't have to be the entire time, but, um, I'm going to meet in public. Cause then at least if you murder me, so you're on a camera somewhere, <laughs> probably doesn't help me, but at least you'll get caught. Maybe yeah. that might've been delusional, but I thought at least that's one more. It's uh, outrunning a bear mm-hmm. you're trying to make yourself. And this is applicable to regular dating too, by the way, not yeah. just paid companionship. I want to be the hardest one to kill so that I hate that, but I want you to pick somebody else. I mean, you should pick nobody, but, right. but I want it not to be me for sure. Right. So the appointment in the beginning, when you're finding your regulars and meeting people, uh, the most common thing was an, e- an, an evening for two or three hours in Beverly Hills. Mm-hmm. I did a lot of like showing up, cocktail in the bar, maybe dinner, and then being alone at valet at 1 a.m. And God love those valet guys at montage and things. <laughs> they never said anything. I mean, they must have 10 a night. And they yeah. were always very sweet because no, you know, 26-year-old is at valet at 1 o'clock in the morning by herself. Yeah. <laughs> they know. <laughs> but, you know, they're paid for discretion and they're mm-hmm. keeping some very wealthy guy very happy. Yeah. Uh, and nobody's really being hurt. So right. they don't say anything. And that's going on there every night. And right. everybody knows it. And in every city in the world, by the way. Right. So that was pretty common was just a few hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, I never wanted to meet people for just one hour because, uh, as you've noticed, I'm chatty and I don't, I didn't think I could get comfortable that quickly. Mm-hmm. So uh, I started out with a multi-hour minimum. Mm-hmm. I also knew because when I first got an escorting, I was trying to work for an agency and nobody would hire me. Mm. Uh, they hired, you know, Playboy Centerfolds and the kind of girls you should. Right. I was cute, but I wasn't that cute. Right. But an agency owner told me, you're smart, you're young, you don't need an agency, you can do this yourself. Mm-hmm. But I knew that in L.A. I was like a six. Mm-hmm. So I knew I wasn't going to get them on looks because right. I live in this town, but yeah. I could get them on personality. Right. So if I, if they could spend a few hours with me, they're going to like me. Right. And by golly, they did. Yeah. Because I knew I was smart and I was friendly mm-hmm. and I like people, I'm fascinated mm-hmm. by everybody. Mm-hmm. So if I could get a longer time, then I could bond with them and I could, you know, win-win. I could keep the customer happier and build myself some kind of a relationship. Because, again, I was not going to get them on beauty, not, mm-hmm. in, not in L.A. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it worked. So the evenings turned into trips. Uh, one of my first clients was like, let's go helicopter skiing. You're a skier. And so we'd go to Canada for a week on end and being able to ski helps. Yeah. PSA girls, if you want to make a lot of money as a companion, get good at golf. <laughs> if you could be good at golf and be a hot woman who's oh not too God. old. Oh, you can millions. <laughs> yeah. Because that's all these guys would love somebody who was stellar at golf. Yeah. Because women usually are not. Right. Certainly not when they're well, young. Well, it's a man sport. Yeah. And the generally. only women that are good at it are 80. <laughs> like their wife's good at it. Yeah. That's not who they want. So, yeah. Sadly or yeah. whatever. So, um, it's yeah, funny. They, you just made me think of this star, Gabby Carter, who's like, she just turned 19 and she was like the hot new thing in, in the industry. And she was actually like a golf champion hey. in school. What can I have her number? She sounds <laughs> rad. And I was just like, wow, <laughs> I never thought about it. But like, Gabby's got a seriously marketable asset right there. <laughs> well, you think about you, you're hanging out with men. So, you know, I've been courtside to every game of everything. Right. Fieldside. We're, I'm going to the Super Bowl soon. Do you like sports? Sure. I've learned to like it more than I would have right. as a girl. And my family were a bunch of academia nerds. We weren't huge sports fans. Mm-hmm. We didn't not like it. But if you're hanging out with, you know, your average successful American, unfortunately, most of these guys are white because that's mm-hmm. who has the power and the money. Mm-hmm. You're probably going to want to learn how to do guy things. Mm. So, yeah, golf. You know, whatever. Skiing. Go, going to sport. Yeah, skiing helped a yeah. lot because that's kind of a rich person's sport. And yeah. I don't know. Polo. I did get taken to Buenos uh, Argentina several times to play oh, polo. cool. Had no idea what I was doing, but it was fun. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's hockey on horses and it's super fun. Yeah, it but, looks really I mean, I grew up as an equestrian. So, oh, did you? Yeah, I rode horses my whole life. I was competitive, but I've never played a great polo. companion. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't need to. It's funny, my mom would always and they, my parents also made me take tennis lessons. And I also went to oh, Italian. Yeah. Oh. They like really wanted to like raise me as a lady. And my mom would always say to me, She's like, Darling, you never know when you're gonna meet and dine with the president. And She's I was like, right. I feel like that's never gonna happen. But look <laughs> but, at where we are now. In a world that has privileged people, like it or not, yeah. I don't like it any more than the next person, but don't you like it that at least you can hold your own and not be intimidated in sort of those circles? Yeah. I mean, I can't play tennis, but I have pretty good da- table manners, yeah. so I know what knife and fork to use. It's useful. I mean, <laughs> it sucks, right, that the whoever has the power decides what is are valuable traits to have, right, but, but right. they do. Yeah. Same here. I was, you know, sorority girl in college and all that and- being able to have sort of the same kind of experiences as these men mm-hmm. earned earned me more money. Mm-hmm. And that is unfortunate that the people in my business who earn the most are often the women who least need it. Because mm. you're the classy ones, right? The, right. Who, from a very privileged background. Right. And and that sucks. But yeah. whoever said the world was fair. Right? That is true. Um, so you uh, – I just totally lost my train of thought. I, was like, <laughs> I just had a great question for you and it went out the window. Oh, no, I was – okay, I was going to ask you about um, what it's like, like, if these people – because basically my whole thing is – my the idea that's running in my head is that, like, you are clearly somebody who really likes people and, like, you're a very personable person and that's a quality that I feel like a lot of people don't have because people get on my nerves. <laughs> um, so I feel like I wouldn't have the patience. So I feel like probably one of, your, like, your great qualities beyond being – you know, intelligent and beautiful and all of these things is that you probably have an enormous amount of patience. <laughs> Not online. <laughs> um, uh, I've monetized my loneliness. I don't have a husband. I don't have a boyfriend. I don't have kids. Okay. So I, I need people. Okay. And I, yeah. So probably when I show up to, you know, go skiing with a client, I'm mm-hmm. super lonely and I'm excited to be around anybody, especially somebody who's going to pay me 25 grand to take me skiing. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> and some old dude is just going to go to sleep at nine o'clock at night and I'm going to watch Netflix. I mean, why? What? What is not to? And he's not going to marry me? Oh, jackpot for me. I didn't want to anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm emotionally available. Right. And that is probably because I don't have too much other stuff right going on. that sounds really cool doesn't it that i'm like a pathetic <laughs> i mean <laughs> i wouldn't put it that way but i think that it seems to me like you find life experiences through other people i'm never happier than when i'm learning yeah and everybody can teach you something yeah everybody's story can bring you to your knees if you let it have you what has been like one of your coolest experiences that you've had with a client, like, have you ever been taken to a really incredible event or sure had some country or just? I've been all over the world, um, Australia twice last year, Hong Kong right before the riots. Um, I've been the BA to play polo and go to the Open. I've been to all the Super Bowls and NBA finals and um, lots of private jets. I like private jets. I'm going to really miss private jets when this is over because, mm. man, they're so much nicer than travel. I know I've never been on a private jet. but what? I like, No, I feel like how could you? It's so much I did, better. I did first. No, I did business class once and it was so hard for me to go back to yeah. economy. And, it ruins you, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And every time I'm in, I'm in economy, I'm like, I know what they're getting in business <laughs> class and it's so much better than this and this sucks. <laughs> well, and look, private jet, you can wake up at 7 a.m. and be skiing by 930 in Colorado. Yeah. Because you just crawl out of bed, go to the plane like i learned um poor people and rich people don't have luggage only like us in the middle we have luggage because poor people don't travel and rich people just have their own plane so they just bring their like a client once he brought like his dry cleaning i was like where's your luggage he's like it's my plane i don't need luggage they they hang it in the bathroom in the back by the wow. bedroom because yeah. it's my plane he just brought like one outfit yeah and i mean he had another house with everything in it so of he course. actually didn't even need any stuff yeah so yeah i mean last year for my birthday a client took me to san francisco just for dinner mm-hmm. very very pretty woman he had a bespoke dinner with its own menu made at Quince. And we took the jet up, had dinner, and took the jet back. Nice. And, you know, meanwhile, boxes of Cartier and all this crap. And, I mean, it's it's obscene, right? Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I'll miss all that when very soon here it's ending. Um, Do you think you're going to quit eventually? I mean, I don't want to, but time waits for no man. So <laughs> I can't – I mean, I might not be out here at 70 being like, I still got it. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> 